Hey everyone, Steven from 11ish, a channel where we talk about lucrative investment strategies and opportunities based on the requests from the 11ish collective. And many of you have asked me to do a video on Tesla. A lot of you are super excited about Tesla and I completely understand why. But in this video, I'm gonna tell you all of the pros and cons of investing into Tesla and why I do not. And I'm not making this video to create shock factor or you know get views just because I'm being a contrarian. I honestly believe in my investment strategy and the things that I say. So if this is the type of content you've been looking for, please hit that like button and let's get started. Regardless of whether I think Tesla is investable or not at a specific time, Elon Musk is absolutely one of my entrepreneurial heroes. His business strategy in this automotive market where you have so many billion, multi-billion dollar players is, is so shrewd, you know? He basically floated at the top end of the supply demand curve where he created low production but high quality, high profit margin vehicles so that he can tackle the market with technology and business differentiation with a lot less competition. This way, Toyota Prius did their own thing, but Elon Musk and Tesla, they captured a market that everyone thought didn't exist, but it did exist. And then as awareness and brand love became a thing, they started moving tear down. I mean, you guys know I care about business value and execution and leadership. Elon Musk has a proven track record for successfully creating businesses with what seems like a blink of an eye. Elon Musk has became the king of humanity in tech tackling three core industries that are prime to drive evolution and prime to drive change. And that, of course, is renewable energy, travel, and my favorite, cybernetics. Of course, we can invest in one of them, but the two other ones excite me a lot more. That's a completely different discussion altogether. With Elon's history of successfully building businesses and actually creating billions of dollars in top-line growth, Tesla makes a lot of sense for a lot of people. The technology makes a lot of sense for a lot of people. I get why everyone wants to buy it. The number one reason why I think people should invest in Tesla is because you get to be a part of history and that to me is super important. I would much rather do this than donate money to a cause where I don't fully understand. Making eco-friendly a badass concept, you know, making it a badge, making something worthwhile to own. All of this is incredibly important, in my opinion, for humanity and us moving forward in the right direction. And coincidentally, if you're investing in Tesla as opposed to donating your money outright, not only are you driving ideas towards the direction that you want to better humanity, you also create this win-win beneficial situation, right? You're getting your investments an opportunity to grow as opposed to just donating the money and hoping that they do the right thing with the money, and that's it. Outside of business-specific strategies and growth opportunities, there are three things that I look for that usually drives a stock price up. One is that if we're at a bubble where everyone is super excited, a lot of gamblers, you hear in my videos, I talk about gamblers a lot in the videos, this will drive the stock price up temporarily. If a stock splits, that will drive the stock up temporarily. And then lastly, when there's a bunch of stimulus-related activity that is trying to prop up businesses, that will positively affect the stock market as well, temporarily. There are two major concerns that's preventing me from investing in Tesla. The number one concern is the size of Tesla's moat. Yes, they have created great technology. And if you listen to Elon Musk, his primary objective is to drive the evolution of technology the evolution of good things being able to be used by everybody. Like that, to me, is my understanding of how he leads his company, which I think is excellent. However, it seems to me like all of the major players, the incumbents in the auto industry are holding back. Many leaders in the incumbent automotive industry has came out publicly saying that there is no real demand, even though that is the right direction that we want to all head. And you can see this, without them even saying that, you can see this in the total number of cars sold versus the total number of regular cars or trucks sold. 
This to me is very concerning. Not because that there is not big enough of a trend for people buying eco-friendly cars, because I think that will happen, that has to happen. But because it seems to me like the growth, the amount of sales that's happening now is heavily driven by governmental incentives so that you know when you buy an expensive eco-friendly car, it gets subsidized. That's the first thing. The second thing is that if these incumbents decide that now there is a big enough of a market and they start attacking the eco-friendly automotives aggressively, I do not think that Tesla has a good chance for a price war. The technology that Tesla is putting out is not specifically unique. It's absolutely great and the cars are awesome. You know, the reviews are really, really amazing, but that does not mean that incumbents are prevented from entering the market when they feel like the market size is big enough, when there is enough demand. And that to me is problematic. I absolutely believe that there is room for Tesla as a brand because you know it's done an amazing job and there is legitimate brand awareness and love for the product that's built. But long term, I mean, even Rolls Royce got bought out by BMW. But if the incumbents continue to be hesitant about tackling these eco vehicles head on, then I absolutely see that Tesla can continue to grow and do a really, really great job at it. My second concern is that the upside is a lot less transparent than the downside. So if we look at companies like Amazon or Zoom or even Tencent, for example, you can see exactly what they're doing. They're tackling another continent or they're tackling another industry, adding on to their portfolio based on the superiorness of their technology or they're tackling a logistical problem that only they can tackle. Right now, Tesla's batteries are not so good that people are not buying Priuses, for example. I'm not 100% sure whether the eco-friendly you know, user segment is willing to pay that high price for eco-friendly vehicles at this time because the regular vehicles are getting more and more gas efficient as well. Hybrid vehicles are getting better and better as well. If the battery technology advances in a very, very substantial way, I can see companies like Tesla blowing it out of the water. But if that happens, I can also see the other automakers tackling this thing head on ASAP as well, right? It's a double-edged sword. My experience in the software industry is that you can capture a lot of market being the first player. You recognize the market that other people ignored and you capture that value, great. But as technology advances, unless you own some super crazy patents, the competitors will start to catch up. The hardware's cost will go down because that's just how the economy of scale works. Once that happens, the software will start catching up. All of the competitors will start catching up, which is great for consumers because then you have more choices at a reasonable price range because there are so many uh, competitors. But the difference in the softwares themselves will become a lot less and less transparent. And then eventually Tesla will lose that competitive edge. And frankly, that is what I'm expecting all of these behemoth incumbents are doing. They're waiting for the technology to be right so that they can tackle head on. Because compared to how many cars they sell right now and how much money they make, the eco vehicle industry it just isn't big enough for them to look at it that way. And lastly, if you believe the economy is about to go to the pooper, which many, many people smarter than me are saying, then one of the first industries that go out is automotives. Because think about it, right? Why would you buy a car if your car already works fine? If the economy goes to shits, people don't have as much money and therefore you're less incentivized to upgrade your car. And so if Tesla starts tackling even harder on the commercial side, I can see definitely that there might be a really, really explosive growth opportunity there. But outside of that and COVID, preventing people from buying cars because you're not traveling, I'm frankly expecting the entire automotive industry shrinking in the next three to six months. I definitely understand why so many people invest in Tesla, but I hope that all of you who are watching this video are investing in Tesla for the right reasons. Not because you're looking to get rich, but because you believe in what Elon Musk is doing, its business strategy and the value it provides for humanity. In terms of its explosive growth, I absolutely think it's temporary. And frankly, I feel like you should be collecting wins before the earnings come out. Because, I mean, I'd be very, very curious to see what their earnings look like during this COVID period. 
you know, good indicator for you is to look at the uh, earnings report coming out from the other automakers and get a comparison, get a sense of how the industry is working out as a whole. I'm glad that Elon Musk is at the steering wheel and creating all of these visions and doing all of these explicitly public interviews about his rational but brutally honest approach in technology and how society needs to move forward, making his life and everyone else's life interesting. But Tesla is a company that I will not invest in. If SpaceX becomes public though, I would invest that in a heartbeat. All right, everyone, this is all I have to say about Tesla. Now, I can definitely be wrong. I mean, some random guy on the comments started arguing me about indicators versus evidence. If I have something more than indicators, then I will be putting like millions of dollars and doing huge amount of options trading on the stock opportunities that I'm suggesting that you guys should take a look at, right? I am absolutely not an oracle, nor do I say I'm one. I'm basically looking at things in a very objective way from my perspective based on the indicators that I see are valuable and rational, and that's how I invest. You include that with bankroll management, at least based on my strategy, it's been pretty effective, and this is why I share it with you guys, right? You can absolutely disagree with me, and I have no problem with that. And I hope that you don't have a problem with me disagreeing with your strategy if you do choose to invest in Tesla. All in all, we're here to learn from each other, make some money, and so if you disagree with me and you have some rational reasons behind it, please leave a comment so I can listen and respond and start a dialogue with you. If you have any requests for other stocks, please leave a comment as well after you hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Thanks for watching and I look forward to working with you next time. Thank you.